Welcome in everybody. We will begin momentarily. Welcome everybody. My name is Laura McDonald and I'm the Director of Professional Learning here at NCEA. Thank you for joining us today for using the NESVEX for continuous improvement. Before we begin, I have three quick little details. If you haven't noticed already, we are recording. So everyone behave. If you have questions during the presentation, what we use is the Q&A box. So you'll be able to Type questions in the Q&A just as you would a chat. Um, Mary uh, will be able to see your questions and as well I and will answer them just the best we can and as um, Mary is ready. Also at the end of the session, I will share a link with you. This is the link to complete a survey. All surveys will be shared with our speakers. So be kind. And also um, this is the way you'll get a certificate at the to show that you have been um, at this webinar. So I'll share that link at the end of this session. Um, before I, I turn it over to Mary, Mary, thank you for being here with us today. Um, let's begin as we begin all things in prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, thank you for teaching us. You give us wisdom now to help us in the future. We are grateful for this new school year in which we may grow in faith, knowledge, and love of Jesus. We pray for our students. Thank you for their curiosity, hope, and kindness. Help our students to listen for your voice and continuously find the love of learning. We pray for all teachers. Thank you for giving them dedication, experience, and insight. Sustain them by your spirit with creativity, patience, peace, and joy, and continually guide us. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And now, Mary Camp. Thank you so much. I am going to try to uh, share my screen. Hopefully, it's going to work correctly. No, it's not. I see that. We had this problem earlier. I apologize. Let me see if I can't make it cooperate here. It's just not going to. Well, I don't want to take too much time on that. So um, you might end up having to see my uh, all of my uh, notes here. But well, actually, I don't have those. So um, but you'll see it in the notes way instead of the presentation, um, unless I can find it quickly. But um, as I do that, I am Mary Camp. I am the secretary for the NESPEX Council. I'm a former Catholic school principal and teacher, and I am currently the associate director for the uh, Florida, Florida uh, associate director for accreditation at the Florida Catholic Conference. So I am uh, one of the practitioners on the NESVEX Council because uh, we use these accreditation, these standards for our accreditation. There are other ways that you can uh, use these for continuous improvement. You could use them um, in uh, self-study to create plans or update uh, plans and policies for strategic planning, for self-evaluation as a classroom observation tool. I have quite a few slides that I'm gonna go through today. I'm gonna do it quickly. I just am hoping to um, give you some ideas of ways you could use the NESBEX for continuous improvement work and hopefully spark some ideas for specific implementation strategies in your school. So some of the tools within the NESBEX that you could use for this work would be the defining characteristics, 
the domains, the standards, the benchmark rubrics, surveys, and some upcoming monographs. So the defining characteristics. There are nine of these, and I have the titles of these on the screen. And you know, as we look at these, are these a lived reality in the school? Now, you could spend quite a bit of time on just one of these. The full description of each one is in the new Nesbex book and uh, on the website. These could be used as a monthly theme. They could be used within staff retreats or as you're developing um, or reviewing your foundational documents. They could be used in a survey to see how the school is living out these characteristics. You could also use the domains. And I've been sharing different uh, QR codes. This QR code uh, takes you to the NESBEC site on NCEA's website, where you can see all of these tools that we have um, based on the first edition, and we will be updating them for this second edition. But as you look at uh, the four domains, there's a preamble for each one. And you could simply start at that level and use these domains uh, at staff meetings. Uh, you could form PLCs to focus on one or more of them. You could share them with committees, departments, the staff. Um, or you could, as you're reading through the preamble, see the different church documents that we refer to and uh, do more reading in those. So if we just look at these preambles, uh, for Mission Catholic Identity, you know, there's quite a bit in each of the preambles. I'm just going to draw your attention to uh, a piece of each one. So in Mission Catholic Identity, inviting young people into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, that's the core of what we do in Catholic school. So how is that happening in your school? How much of the time of uh, your day is spent on that? Looking at governance and leadership, again, there are many pieces here that you could um, you could break it apart and spend a long time studying. If we just look at this uh, sentence that I highlighted, Catholic school governance and leadership can be seen as a ministry that promotes and protects the responsibilities and rights of the school community. So how is the school governance and the leadership in your school lived out as a ministry and not just a job? Looking at the preamble for academic excellence, this highlighted sentence, essential elements of an academically rigorous and doctrinally sound program mandate curricular experiences, including co-curricular and extracurricular activities, which are rigorous, relevant, research-based, inclusive, global, and rooted in the Catholic faith and traditions. Now, just that one sentence, as you look at your whole curriculum, the written uh, curriculum standards, the classroom instruction and activities, and then the co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Now, how is it that they are rigorous? How do you make them rigorous and relevant? And each of those other terms that are mentioned there. The preamble for operational vitality. At the very beginning, we talk about how we know schools face challenges. Um, so it's important to have a sustainable financial plan and, and human resources and personnel management, professional formation, facilities maintenance and enhancement, um, institutional advancement and contemporary communication. Now, each of those things need to be very robust. But if we look at that, that last sentence that I highlighted, um, this is, is the problem in many of our schools that over time, you know, even when we have these great academic programs and we're very strong in the Catholic faith and the mission of our school, our schools can't survive if we aren't focusing on the operational vitality. And oftentimes this is what gets put off to the side because we're so busy. So this is a really important domain as well. So that's the top level. Then you could look at 
um, the standards level. And at the at the standards level, you could use these um, at staff meetings. You could select uh, different standards for each meeting. Uh, you could select specific standards for the year or for each month. You could focus on a phrase, develop reflection questions. Now we did make uh, changes to the uh, to the standards, and I'm not going to go through all of those today. Uh, that was uh, last week's web webinar, and we know there was some technical difficulties, so it has been reported if you are interested in that and seeing what the differences are from our first edition to our second edition. But any changes to the standards, I do have noted in green as we go through. So looking at at this first standard, we're looking at the mission of the school. And as you're looking at that, you could develop different reflection questions if you're just going to look at this at the standards level. And one could be, what makes the mission statement Catholic? When we look at this second standard, now we're looking at the religious education and integrating the Catholic faith into the entire academic program. So how is catechesis integrated into the life of the school? So um, yes, I will share the, uh, the slides. Um, the, I had a QR code at the beginning and there'll be one at the end. And I can, um, at the end, I'll also put into the chat um, how else you can access these. So looking at standard three, now we're looking at living the Catholic faith, um, help, helping our, our students live the faith. So both um, within and, um, the classroom and outside of the classroom. So what are the various aspects of student faith formation in the school? Standard four is focused on the adults and their faith life. So how does the school foster missionary discipleship, uh, building up our individual relationships with Jesus Christ for the staff, for the families? So in governance and leadership, we have two standards. Standard five is focusing on the governing body um, and their role. Standard six is focused more on the leadership team. They, um, they're mentioned in both. As we look at standard five, how is the governance and leadership of the school defined? Um, how do mission, academic excellence, and operational vitality play into the job descriptions and into the implementation? Standard six, uh, as we look at the leader leadership team here and how they are prioritizing and embodying the school's mission and vision, what is the mission and vision of the school? And that's not just the mission statement or the vision statement. And one of the tools that we do have on the website now and in our new second edition um, are the glossary. Uh, terms and mission and vision are defined in there as well as mission statement and vision statement. So looking at standards for academic excellence, we have three of these and standard seven is focusing on curriculums, uh, curriculum standards and instruction. So as we look at, at this particular one, do all of the teachers know and have access to the curriculum standards? How are the gospel values infused? What is the expectation regarding effective instruction? And there are many more questions we could ask, and that's also why we have the benchmark levels, and we'll be looking at those next. So looking at standard eight, using assessment data. So what is the school-wide assessment data and usage plan? And standard nine, now we're looking at all of the extra things that, that go on in the school to make up the life of the school. So how and when are co-curricular and extracurricular programs developed, reviewed, and evaluated? Again, you can come up with many reflection questions on these. 
So we'll look at these uh, standards, these four standards in operational vitality. Standard 10 is focused on the finances. Uh, a reflection question here, how elaborate is the long-term financial plan for the school? And standard 11, we are now looking at the human resources and personnel policies. So how does the school continue to improve salary and benefits packages? Standard 12 is looking at the um, facilities, equipment, and technology management plan. What's included in, this, in that plan for the school um, in order to support the operational vitality? And standard 13 is looking at all of the advancement work that, help, that happens for the school. How is institutional advancement work organized? who's responsible for the implementation. So to really delve in and um, get into very specifics as you're doing this continuous improvement work, uh, you could use the benchmarks and you could use these to create or update plans. This slide shows uh, many of the plans that are mentioned in the benchmarks and which benchmark or what standards um, they're mentioned in. They could be used for classroom observations. You could go through the benchmarks in standard seven. And at, once we have those new rubrics ready to go, you could use those as well to develop um, some classroom observation tools. And the teachers could use these for self-evaluation. In addition to those um, the classroom observation tools, you could use some of that in the self-evaluation, but you could also take a look at Mission Catholic Identity uh, benchmarks and the academic uh, excellence benchmarks to develop a teacher self-evaluation tool. As you use the benchmarks, we will have the new rubrics ready to go soon, um, and these give you a narrative for each level from not meeting the benchmark to exceeding the benchmark. And those rubrics themselves really give you that roadmap for improvement. So this one that I have on the screen um, will be tweaked a little bit in, in the new rubric because we did a few tweaks to this benchmark, but you get that narrative for each level and then you have the possible sources of evidence that are listed um, just to help you think about, okay, how, how do we show ourselves where we are on this rubric? So I'm gonna go through just um, some benchmarks within each of the domains. Um, for the most part, I'm going to be looking at um, the benchmark wording here and there. I'll talk about the rubric or show you what um, the rubric might be for fully meets. Um, any of the changes to the benchmark wording I've highlighted. So looking at 1.3 and 1.6 in Mission Catholic Identity, we're looking at the mission statement um, and renewing that, reviewing that regularly in 1.3. And then 1.6 is a new uh, benchmark where we're talking about all of those supplemental statements that you have that go along with the mission statement those foundational documents. So reviewing the mission statement on a regular basis um, can promote, if you do that annually, it really can promote its use. You could be doing this at an annual staff retreat um, with a word wall survey. Um, and one of the things to think about is could any school use your school's mission statement? And when we look at 1.6, what foundational documents does your school have? What are you using? And are you using them, that action versus theory? So they're written, but are you doing anything with them? And what is the mission and vision of your school? So there are many questions you could consider as you look at these, these two benchmarks. Uh, you know, what do the statements mean? Is your mission statement Catholic? Um, how are the statements used? How are they taught? Are they taught? How is the mission statement lived? How is it modeled? 
How and when are the statements reviewed? Are they used at various meetings? Are any statements an integral part of classroom life? 2.7, we didn't make changes to this one. It's talking about the, the fact that the theory and practice of the church's social teachings are essential elements of the curriculum. In working with schools, I often find that um, there's not a lot of familiarity with the, the church's social teachings. There are seven themes and there are great resources on the USCCB website and the Catholic Relief Services website. Um, so those are two great places to go if this is um, a benchmark where you want to, uh, to focus and to improve. 3.3 and 4.4 both talk about authentic Christian service programs and the involvement of both students and the adults in the community. So what does Christian service look like in the school? Now, I've, every Catholic school I've ever been in does Christian service. Now, sometimes it's simply a collection of canned goods or a collection of money. And as you delve into these two benchmarks and looking at that authentic Christian service program and that it's um, promoting the lived reality of action and service of social justice. So the goal is that it becomes a robust, authentic Christian service program that is an integral part of the school culture. So, you know, to do that, if schools don't have that, then, you know, you just need to start by designing it and determining if it's going to be school-wide um, at the beginning, how classrooms are involved or clubs, how are, how are students involved and staff, how, how can families be involved? Could the larger uh, community or the parish, if you're part of a parish, be involved? You could start with connection to the corporal works of mercy, the Catholic virtues, the Catholic social teachings or scripture passages. And as you really um, work on it, then building in that reflection piece for all those involved. There are great examples in many schools, long held traditions. There are places where each grade level has a job within a larger project or where each grade level has their own project that they're um, on which they're focusing. Connections are made to local organizations or the needs. And some schools have that pastoral plan or a campus ministry plan or some type of a school-wide theme that incorpor that's incorporated into all of this. Benchmark 4.2. Um, here we are looking at the fact that our schools are assisting parents in their primary role as educators of their children in the faith. So some questions to consider. How does the school support parents? Are there any programs that are offered? Do you have family ambassador program? Is there some collaboration with the parish? 4.6 um, is a new one um, where we're focused here on that leadership team working with the faculty um, and their unique formative needs. So some items to consider here uh, is the faculty and staff orientation, especially um, you know, new brand new teachers who are um, not familiar with Catholic school, never taught in Catholic school if they're brand new, and if they haven't attended Catholic school. Um, maybe having mentors, but this benchmark is going beyond catechetical certification. Okay, looking at governance and leadership, some of the benchmarks here, 5.3, the governing body um, with the leadership team systematizes policies and um, is working on sus uh, sustainability through leadership succession. So questions to consider, how and how often are policies and handbooks reviewed? Are these policies and expectations easily accessible? And the one that um, many people don't work on is that last piece. And that's that succession, leadership succession planning. And if you've ever been the new administrator in a school, um, sometimes even a new teacher, 
this is what you need. You want to know how to do the job and who has the passwords, who holds the keys. So uh, we have developed in our program um, a template for this where we're looking um, month to month what um, the, the leadership should be doing each month, and then just some specific topics, even things as simple as acronyms, because when you get thrown into a new place, you don't always know those. So um, that's a, a great idea, and hopefully Laura has captured that about a training on that succession planning. So um, benchmark 5.7 is a, a new one where basically we included this previously in um, the benchmarks, but it was part of another benchmark. So now these have been separated out. So there's a separate one, just looking at the governing body and the fact that there's ongoing formation, self-evaluation um, for them as well. So in the glossary, it talks about who that governing body is. And for many of our schools, if you um, are a parish school, that's the pastor and the principal with some type of an advisory body. But sometimes there are schools that have a governing body with limited jurisdiction or even um, full control. So whoever that is, this benchmark is um, referring to them. So what type of formation and training is offered for this governing body? And um, how and when do they set goals and evaluate themselves as a, as a body? 6.3 um, has a lot in it. Um, and for the most part, it is the heart of the job um, of the leadership team, having that uh, direct oversight and responsibility for development of personnel when it comes to recruitment, professional growth, faith formation, formal assessment. So questions to consider, how are faculty and staff supported in their roles? Uh, do the each of them develop their own professional development plan, each teacher? Um, is there instructional coaching? Are there regular observations? How is that relationship developed with the teachers? 6.5, the leader leadership team is directing um, the development and continuous improvement of the Catholic identity and faith formation and uses school-wide evidence to plan for continued and sustained growth in these areas. Brand new benchmark specifically focused on looking at our Catholic identity um, and our faith formation and the data that we have. So how often is Catholic identity and faith formation evaluated? Um, the students, the staff, faculty, the environment, how is it assessed? What evidence are you using? So now looking at academic excellence. So this first one, um, in standard seven, we moved some of the benchmarks around. Um, this one, we added um, a few words here and there. But then this is looking at what the rubric might be. Again, we are still uh, finalizing these. But for this one, we're looking at the curriculum and instruction and the fact that it is addressing the effective dimensions of learning, such as Catholic virtue, intellectual and social emotional dispositions, relationship and community building, and skills of executive function. So more than likely in the rubric, then this will be spelled out more like you see here on the screen. So this one, you know, just looking at both the written documents that you have and then what's actually being implemented in the classroom, what's in the lesson plans, what do you see when you do classroom observations? 7.8 is one of the benchmarks talking about PLCs. So questions to consider here, when and how do the faculty collaborate? What is the focus of those collaborations? Uh, does this collaboration result in improved student achievement and or engagement and or well-being? 8.1, 
Um, there's a slight wording change here. It wasn't something I could necessarily highlight, but it's very similar to the former 8.1, where we are looking at school-wide student data being used to inform, review, and evaluate curriculum, the co-curricular programs, and the um, looking at student growth and faculty performance. So questions to consider here, what student data is available? How often is uh, student achievement assessed? What tools are used? And then most importantly, how is that analyzed? And then what happens to that analysis? How is it used to evaluate curriculum and instruction? 9.1, looking at school-wide programs for parents and guardians that provide opportunities to partner with school leaders. So we didn't change this benchmark, but just looking at that phrase, partnering with parents. Okay, so, and in the benchmark itself, that parents are partnering with the school. So are you using that phrasing? Um, are there invitations to parents? Are you seeking their suggestions and feedback? Moving on to operational vitality and 10.1, um, some of the change there in that wording about conduct a financial planning process. While we understood that was happening in the previous ones, it wasn't spelled out. So we added that in. But questions to consider with this benchmark, what is that financial planning process at the school? Who's involved? What documents are available on a regular basis? What does this look like? And and how is it helpful or not helpful to your school? 11.2, looking at the human resources policies, the, there wasn't a change made here, but how does the school meet human resource requirements? If you're part of a diocese, are you working um, with a central office? But then how is that implemented in your school? Do you have position descriptions, complete compensation packages, professional development that's provided or funded? 12.2, the schools is looking at the school's budget and that it supports your facilities, equipment, and technology management plans. So how robust is that plan? And how detailed is your three to five year financial plan? And how do these two things inform each other? Have you completed a reserve fund study? There are third, uh, company, third party companies that will come in and do that. What about a utility usage study? And 13.3, looking at the development advancement plan. And things that you should consider here are what are the goals and strategies that are included in the plan? Who is responsible for the implementation? And how often are these strategies evaluated for return on investments? Um, are you doing strategies because you've always done them? So that's just looking at some of the benchmarks. Obviously, um, there are many more, but uh, we I just have a short time today. So I also wanna mention that we are updating the surveys and that all of the things that I've talked about today are on uh, the NSBEX website. So we have the, the standards and, under, and underneath those, you can see the defining characteristics in detail, as well as the preambles for each of the domains. Um, we also have the uh, resources, the glossary, uh, tutorials and webinars, and then in the assessment tools, we have the, the rubrics and the surveys. We'll be updating all of these things with our new um, second edition. And then the monographs, right now there is a monograph uh, for Standard 10 that's available in the NCEA store, and there will be more monographs, so short books on the standards and these um, will be published this fall. Uh, our council met with the authors of these and we know that they're gonna uh, contain the research that they did, the best practices from the field, and basically they're gonna work as a how-to. Um, I don't know when the second is, um, edition standards and benchmarks are gonna be on the website itself. You can get the, you can get the book 
um, in the NCEA store. But um, the website is just a matter of when um, they're able to to get that updated. Um, we still are finishing up the rubrics, but the uh, standards and benchmarks are complete. So um, as I mentioned, these are all of the things that we currently have, and they will be updated on the website. Any suggestions of other things that would be helpful, we are always interested in hearing those. Our NESBEX Council uh, will continue to do our work, and part of that is making these known and um, really helping them be implemented in your school. So any ideas that you have, we are always interested in hearing those. So I thank you for your, your time today. Um, if you still have questions, I'm happy to answer those. You see both um, a QR code for the slide deck that I used, as well as the um, evaluation and uh, then the attendance certificates. Um, all right, so Laura, I am going to turn it back over to you and take a look at these other questions. All right, and Mary's going to look, as Mary's looking at the questions, I would like to remind you, I have put the survey link in the chat box as well as you can utilize the link that Mary shared. This is how we know how we're doing. Please, please share your feedback. We do share them with our speakers as well. Um, they're very important to us. We also um, want to let you know that if you complete the survey, there is a place there where you can enter your email so you can receive a, um, an automated email of certificate to, to show that you have attended this webinar. We know that's very important to many of you. Also, I want to let you know as very um, looks at your questions that next Tuesday we will be offering on August 29th another session called Homemakers and Empowering Youth and Young Adults for Creation Care. And this is um, perfect for those of you that work in high schools and um, maybe even middle schools as well. And we'll be joined by people that support our Laudato Lod Sea project. So, um, Mary. Did you want to add anything? I, know, I see you have a lot of reading there. <laughs> um, right. So I think the monographs are going to be really helpful. Someone was asking about using the tools for mission statements. I think I think we'll see some of that in those. Um, so I think that that um, someone is asking about schools that are doing self studies. Um, you. Um, it depends on where you are located and you need to talk with whoever's in charge of your self-study. So for example, in Florida, we are not moving to NESVEX 2.0 until next school year. Um, so if you're already in the process of doing a self-study, please talk to the people in charge and they will tell you what you should do. All right, well, thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Thank you, Mary, so much. Um, you've given us a great overview of the NESBEX, and we appreciate everyone who attended today. Have a great day.